Domo aligato. Guten tag. Salut. Hello. Spasiba. Welcome to Woodness Goodness, everybody. I am Graham, your host and your semi-professional amateur builder who gives you guys tips and tricks that will either make you or break you. ourselves a cabin. To give you a little backstory, I've never built a cabin before. I did a little framing just after high school, learned a little bit about it, fell in love with building things with my hands. Never been really that good at it, but we are learning it as we go. This is a cabin that I'm building on my property. It's 250 square feet, no, 244 square feet. It's 12 feet by 20 feet. The tallest wall is 12 feet. The lower end of the wall is 8 feet to give you some dimensions because people keep asking me. Um, I live on this property and this cabin is going to be an office slash workspace slash hangout slash maybe a suite or a cabin for when guests come and hang out or stay with me if I have friends after this is all over. I'm kind of fired up because I had an inspector come just a few days ago and they came and looked at everything and to my disbelief we are pretty much golden. All I have to do is add a grounding rod to my breaker box and then we are hunky dory. And of course, you all know, Bob is your uncle. So, today we are going to start working on insulation and vapor barrier and making sure everything is good because as soon as we start putting those things in, we are not gonna have access to the insides of our walls anymore for the most part. So, without further ado, Let's uh, start laying in some insulation and get after it. This stuff's pretty easy to use. I find, um, I find the roll Insulation. I'm pretty sure it's a little more. It's cheaper, and uh, if you don't mind cutting it, where you can have nice big long lengths. A lot of the smaller cabins and tiny houses do uh, spray foam or rigid foam, and that's because you get a lot more R value per inch than you do uh, your typical traditional fiberglass insulation. Just like that. And the plastic for my vapor barrier is perfect because now my plastic comes out, goes over the, well these are faced. So this acts like a vapor barrier but I'm actually going to put a real vapor barrier in here. I don't know if this is going to be an issue with the faced. I wonder if you can use faced insulation and vapor barrier. I better google that. Okay, well. I've done some research and I've been places. I've been to two different Lowe's today and no one carries unfaced insulation. Now, for the viewers that are wondering, what is unfaced insulation and what is faced insulation? Well, faced insulation is this. One side has this craft paper that is supposed to be a acceptable and, you know, reasonable vapor barrier. You would then tuck your edges in, you know, staple them in, and if you really wanted it to be super duper vapor barrier-ish, well, you probably have to tape all the seams. But I kind of don't like it because there's so many seams, there's so many places where moisture, if moisture is to occur, or passing air, or what have you. And so, I was planning on doing a vapor barrier over the whole thing. So that's like this, you know, six mil or four mil poly plastic that 
would go across the whole thing, but you can't do it on top of this paper. Why? <laughs> Great question. I am just ecstatic that you asked. Because then you have one vapor barrier and then a second vapor barrier. Say moisture does get through one vapor barrier somehow. If you have a vapor barrier over another vapor barrier, well now you have two sides, basically a sandwich where moisture is going to have a harder time getting through on both sides. So it's going to be moisture sandwich in there, and then you're going to have with black mold, and then you're going to have to tear down your whole cabin, your wife will leave you, and then you will have literally nothing. I know it's extreme, but that's what we're dealing with. So, I purchased some more insulation, but as I'm looking there, it's like, I mean, this stuff should be able to peel off, right? Well, I bought some R30 insulation as well, and this insulation like literally peels apart really easily. So I am hoping I can kind of make that work. We're gonna see if we can just peel off the backing off this insulation without jeopardizing it, which I, I think we can also, we can totally do. And then we can, you know, insulate these walls and then vapor barrier. Bada bing, bada boom. Sound good? Let's do it. See? Peels off pretty easily, honestly. Seems like a bit of a waste, but like I said, this is how I want to do it. Okay? I like that. That looks good. But I want to try splitting that R30 in half and see if I can also do it with that. And if you're wondering, but I'm wearing gloves because it's fiberglass and I don't want to get itchy. And when you're moving this stuff around, it gives off dust sometimes. That's why I got this little face mask on. Okay, we're doing a test here to see if I can take R30 attic insulation, split it in half, and come away with unfaced insulation and double my square footage because I'm splitting this in two. So first we're gonna measure it up the wall, cut it once, then split it, and then I'll have two pieces. With fiberglass insulation baths, you don't want to be compressing it in. It's not like rigid foam. It's designed to be fluffy. For those of you like you and I, who like to keep things simple, this insulation is meant to be fluffy. It comes compact, but it, you'll see it fluffs back out. So fluffy is good, okay? Fluffy is great. You can buy two by four, three and a half inch uh, R15 insulation that's fiberglass but I'm getting R30, which is roughly eight inches in thickness when it's fully out uncompressed, or eight to nine inches uncompressed. So I have, a, I have about an inch on each piece that will pop out just a little bit. So I'm gonna have a little bit of a compression, but not a lot. This is what happens when your hands sweat in these gloves. Just sweaty.
fiberglass insulation is not that hard to work with as long as you're prepared and kind of know what you are getting. It's probably the, I would say it's probably the cheapest form of insulation, I'm pretty sure. Um, it's, it's definitely not the most efficient, but it's efficient on the bank account, that's for sure. So I'm going to stuff some more insulation in there. And after I just fill these little gaps, as well as uh, in between the rafters at the top of these walls, we got ourselves a cotton candy palace. Don't eat this stuff. It looks delicious, but uh, it'll, it'll hurt your throat. top of my wall here, the top plate of my angled wall sits out a bit from my rafter. So I have to scab on a piece of one and a half by basically one and a half. The reason is, is I need something to nail on to when I have my planking coming up here. Just, this is a, a pro tip, but uh, or we'll call it a semi pro tip. Doing insulation when it's 100 degrees out is actually recommended. So you just, you can, you can know that the insulation you're doing is actually going to do something for you in the future. Yeah, I mean the burning eyes and the uh, change of clothes every hour is, is really just motivation, you know. And, and that's what we're going for. We are going for self-induced motivation. No coffee, no energy drink. We just put ourselves on a very narrow strip and walk over lava. We did it, guys. We insulated the cabin. Off camera, I'm gonna probably just do a double check. There's a couple little spots where I could just, you know, stuff a little piece here and there to make sure that there's no air gaps. And uh, I'm gonna make sure that I have nailing points for my you know my walls this is a big turn of events I have been on uh, the build YouTube channel with Matt Reisinger the guy's a genius he's a scientist when it comes to this stuff and he is fairly certain and under the impression especially in the southern states where we don't really deal with the cold temperatures the northern states and Canada does the heat that we have here is way more extreme than the cold. And he said he doesn't recommend vapor barriers. He just recommends you go uh, all in on making sure that your space is airtight. So the main thing we're concerned about is the summer temperatures and the humidity we deal with. And if inside our cabin is air conditioned or it's a lot cooler than the outside, well, those interior walls might eventually get hot and that heat will dissipate that moisture and it will show up on the inside as in the inside of the wall as moisture or, or water or liquid. If this doesn't make any sense, don't worry about it. I'm going to put a link to Matt Reisinger's video below where he explains what a vapor barrier used to be considered and what you should consider in the present day with this building science that you know, the wizards of wood have come up with. I was going to end this video off with a time lapse of me doing a vapor barrier on the inside, but I am at odds if I should or not. I'm leaning towards I'm not going to put a vapor barrier in here, depending on the code of my county. You kind of want there to be a little bit of breathability in your walls, so if there is to be moisture, as in the humid air that we are currently in, with a 100 degree summer here, if you have a vapor barrier, there is no way for the drier air of your interior cabin, which is climate controlled, to possibly dry out those walls 
or the inside of your walls, so to speak. Again, I am just paraphrasing all this. If you want more information, hit that link in the description below and head over to Matt Reisinger's channel because he is, like I said, the man walks on water when it comes to this stuff. And uh, I highly recommend you check him out. Okay, guys. Well, I think that does it for me. We have ourselves a pink candy floss castle with all this beautiful insulation. And uh, we're pretty much ready for the next steps. So thanks for watching. Thank thanks for tuning in if you made it this far. I love you. I feel it. I feel the love. I feel the support. I'm loving every moment of this. Um, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe for more goodies. And I am hoping to pump out some episodes a lot quicker now that we're past the inspection stage. More or less. I still need one more little inspection, but don't worry. We're gonna we're gonna get the dub. Alright guys, much love. Peace. I'm picking up wood vibrations. Hammer down that loose foundation. I'm picking up wood vibrations. Glue's giving me a fixation.